Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Vinyl Loft. Today on Vinyl Loft, I'm going to talk about some new releases and my vinyl pick of the week. In unrelated news, I have refused tickets. Yes! Wow, fuck. Yeah, new releases. The first record that I want to talk about today is by High on Fire, and the album is called The Minimus Mysterious. I think I said that right. Yes! It is being released on E1 Music, and there's some other people releasing vinyl for it, which we're going to talk about. This is the band's sixth album, and it is the second to be released on E1 Music. The album was produced by the prolific Kurt Ballou whose name I hope I just said correctly. You probably know him and love him as the lead and only guitarist in Converge. Yep, that guy. High on Fire plays a blend of stoner metal and sludge metal, which really just means that the songs can be a little bit longer and the riffs are very thick. So thick. Like my tomato sauce, which is delicious. Lead singer and guitarist Matt Pike describes the album as a concept record. The actual concept of the record, which he described further, is amazing, and his words are just too good to not read out loud. So hold on to your butts, because here we go. I got this idea about Jesus Christ and the Immaculate Conception. What if Jesus had a twin who died at birth to give Jesus his life? And then, what if the twin became a time traveler right then? He lives his life only going forward until he finds this scroll from an ancient Chinese alchemist who derived a serum out of the Black Lotus which is actually in Robert E. Howard's Conan stories. And then he starts traveling back in time. He can see the past through his ancestor's eyes, but his enemies can kill him if they kill the ancestor that he's seeing through at the time. Basically, he keeps waking up in other people's bodies at bad times. I'm not entirely sure if E1 is doing a vinyl press of this record, but Relapse Records definitely is. If you go to their website right now, you can pre-order the album by pressing a thousand of them, being split evenly between red and clear, so 500 each. And then I was also checking around the internet and I found a gray vinyl version that's going to be available in Europe, but I don't know who's pressing it. Um, but if you Google search it, I'm sure you can find it. Also, make sure to actually check this record out. You can stream it on NPR right now. The link is below. I haven't listened to High on Fire in years, but I checked out the album stream yesterday and I listened to the whole thing. It was so good. I'm probably going to end up buying this record if I can just randomly stumble upon it in my record store. It's, it's, it's quite... Mwah! You know? Yeah? So good. The second album that I want to talk about today is the self-titled release by Zamudo, which is being put out on Temporary Residence Limited. This is Zamudo's first album, and oddly enough, also their first album to be put out on Temporary Residence. It would be weird if that was different, wouldn't it? Almost seems like it was redundant for me to say that out loud. Time for some history. Zamudo is comprised of Nick Zamudo, who used to make up one half of the books. Now the books broke up in 2010, 2011, some kind of year like that, and they released their final album in 2010, which was called The Way Out, and that album was released on Temporary Residence Limited. See? There's like, you know, a parallel here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm so sorry you saw that. I have trouble describing this album sonically, although Spin.com was able to do it with just one word. That one word? Bubbly. The album is bubbly. Isn't that great? Isn't that a great description of a sound? It's bubbly, but it's not Grimes bubbly. Thank god. It's true that the album is bubbly, but it also feels like it's the first album that is ushering in summer. Like, it's the first album I've heard that feels like it's ushering in summer, that I've heard anyways. I listen to it, and all I can think about are these memories that I haven't had yet in the summer that's coming up, of throwing frisbee in the park, drinking beer, hanging out with friends, laying in the grass, and just having a great old time. That's what this album invokes, is summer. It's the perfect summer album. It probably will end up being my summer album, the one that I listen to in the summer when summer finally happens. As far as pressings go, uh, there's only one so far on the Temporary Residence website. You can get it in black, but there's also a limited number of blue with black spatter, but I have no idea what they're actually limited to or if they're still available. So you just have to buy it and find out, I guess. My vinyl pick of the week is... Bitch Magnet. Yeah. Bitch Magnet. It's a self-titled release that was put out by Temporary Residence Limited. We just talked about them. I like them. They're one of my favorites. 
bitch magnet formed in the mid to late 1980s as the last remnants of the 1980s hardcore movement started to shift into more post-hardcore and emo-core type bands. They began with a sound that came to represent post-hardcore in the early 90s, but then on their last album they started using more elements that would go on to influence post-rock, and many bands such as Mugwai and Battle cite Bitch Magnet as being a big influence on their sound. This 3LP set from Temporary Residence has their three main releases in it, Star Booty, Umber, and Ben-Hur. And I just need to say that the packaging is absolutely beautiful. Whoever designed it deserves a pat on the back because it is, it is so, it is, it, is, it is nice. It's really, really nice. I love just looking at it, not even listening to the record, I just love looking at the packaging. On top of the three albums that are represented, there's also six never-before-released songs five of which are alternate versions of songs that appear elsewhere on the three package set, and another song which, from what I can tell, is new, or at least hasn't been released. So I imagine it was on some kind of demo or b-side or something like that. Like I said before, this is a 3 LP set, and it was limited to a press of 2,000, but it's still available on the Temporary Residence website if you do so feel inclined to purchase it. This retrospective is a must for any post-hardcore fan, and if you're just starting to get into it, this is a great way to dive into the genre because these guys are good. Alright everyone, that's all I've got for you this week. Remember you can follow me on Twitter, I'm at TJTheMute, and you can follow the show as well at Vinyloft. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Tumblr, and subscribe to us on YouTube, which is right here. You can do that right now. Just click. Click, click, click. Done. You're a subscriber. Oh, and by the way, there might be a contest coming up, so keep watching just in case you like winning free stuff, which you probably do, because you're people. And when the credits roll, you'll be exactly 18 days away from Record Store Day. See you, Space Cowboy.